Hello and welcome everyone, this is Mr. Sovar with another Tech It Light video from Minecraft, and this is going to be a very interesting video because I am going to be doing this on my channel and the new animation channel also. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm, I'm catching, up, catching my breath because I kind of ran up here a little too quick, but anyways, I know, I know, sounds like I'm fat and all that. Really not. Oh yeah, and uh, sorry. Ooh. That's a weird noise. Anyways, um, please forgive me if it sounds like World War III is happening outside because it is the 4th of July. I did do a little bit of fireworks yesterday, but today not as much. Um, like, don't get me wrong, I'm a very huge patriot of America and all that. But um, I just really don't do fireworks in the past couple of years. But anyways, I'm going to go over a couple friends' house for that stuff. But anyways, enough of my personal life. Let's get back to Minecraft. Uh, right now, I am on the server that we're going to be doing animations for. Um, sort of a bit like a behind-the-scenes type of video. Uh, here, let me get rid of that. Uh, let me see here. Of course, it's leggy. It's always leggy. I love leg. Not that much. Let's turn it down a bit. Uh, probably do it. Yeah, the lighting looks horrible now. It was looking so good. Uh, oh well. Anyways, this is the server. Uh, it's a really fun server. We did have a bunch of structures and everything built in. There's my area right there. It's pretty cool. But uh, a lot of the... Uh, we did have a lot of buildings constructed. Castles and old towns and stuff like that. But what happened was that we decided to... Uh, basically just kind of redo everything in a more medieval look. As you can see, instead of using tin, I actually have stone blocks, bricks things right now. The castle is gone at the moment, but um, uh, we're going to be working very hard in constructing stuff. And we're also recruiting um, builders. Now, it's not open at the moment, but I figured I would just put that out there. If you're, if anyone is interested out there, um, probably your best chance of getting in there is sending me a message through YouTube. Second best chance is probably... Uh, either through Facebook or Twitter, but I know no one communicates through Facebook to me. Exactly, Mr. Cow. But anyways, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, yeah, I don't really have too much going on right now. Just kind of hanging out, enjoying the leg. Don't, like, it's my computer that's leg is not the server. I know, makes no sense. Got a quad core, good video card. Four gigs of memory, just okay. 1,333 megahertz speed of RAM, DDR3. It's an iMac, basically, so. But uh, the landscape's really nice. Um, right here is where I was working, actually. Uh, the thing is, though, we might ban some items from the Tekkit mods, sort of, but, like, at the moment, maybe pipes and definitely nukes and various things that create damage. But here's going to be where the rules are. Gonna put a bunch of signs on there, not too many. I'll try and make it a little fun, but not too strict. Um, got some light glowstone lighting right here, and uh, this is what we're going to do mainly for the uh, for the facility or the server. We are going to do animations based on a storyline using this server, but at the exact same time having a public server for other people to play around in. It's going to start out as a venture mode, and you can progress through survival and then maybe creative based on how you are. But there's going to be some, a lot of protection areas, meaning that you can't alter stuff or blow up stuff. So it's anti-griefing, anti-hacking, all that stuff. It's going to have a cool NPC system, and it'll allow currency and essentials, like, you know, the essentials plug-in. Um... Let me see. Since this is actually Bucket, also, because we did some modding with the uh, Tech It Light server. 
the, ma the main reason why we did Tech It Light is because the normal Tech It has some crucial mods I love and many other people like that are missing. Yes, the space is cool, but it's just, yeah. And the classical tech is really fun, but it's just so out of date and stuff. Figured we wouldn't even really work on it. Anyways, I love this organization of how you actually get blocks and stuff way better than the old one, so I would never go back to Tech It Classic. Guess I could turn that down a tad. Um. Okay, so uh, I'm not really for sure what we're going to be doing story-wise. It might actually go along with the animations. That would be really cool. I'm pretty, like, I'm actually an eight-year programmer so far, so I know what I'm doing when, I come, when it comes to actually making stuff happen in the server. Not just using Redstone, not just using computers, not just using the mods. I mean actually programming plugins or programming mods. Or using other people's plugins and to alter the settings so that it works just right. I know there's a lot of people out there that can do that too. Not saying I'm the only one or anything like that, but uh, I I do work very hard on that stuff, so I know what exactly what I'm doing. So this would be a high quality built server. I'm mainly the only person <laughs> that's a part of the group that actually knows how to do maintenance and programming and all that stuff for the server, but um. Uh, basically, I'm just going to make this into like an MMORPG type of server as much as possible, even though we'll probably have to wait a little bit before we get hundreds of people on the server. That might change actually with the Minecraft realms, but oh, what the heck, let's, let's go into a uh, far mode, have it render up a little bit. Um... It's basically a huge capital island in the background. Can't see it at the moment because it's loading. And then it's it's like one big huge island, and then you go farther out. You can look at the mini map. The mini map has it rendered already. You go way way out here. The thing is, it kind of puzzles me. Is that why does it look so weird on the mini map? Like, what's wrong with the water here? I guess nothing. But anyways. If you go far out enough, you hit land, and when you hit land, it's like a huge flat land, basically. That's all it really is. And there's like deserts, there's forests, and I mean huge forests and deserts and stuff like that. You can come out here, build, you can explore. I'm pretty sure we'll have this thing filled up by the time it's really public. But that's basically all we're doing at the moment. Um, I don't know what I'm going to be doing for the rest of this video, so what I am going to do for sure is to actually create a computer, or at least start working on creating a computer. Why do we want a computer? Well, it's more for us um, uh, OP people, basically. Um, Well, what I mean by that is uh, the owners of the server, which I'm one of the owners, so. Okay, so let me go back. Let me, actually, I'm, I need to upgrade my computer or something. Let's do short. I know short's a little messed up, but I'm just going to do short distance stuff. Okay, so if I could find my way around, which I do know where I'm at, um, I'm gonna fly up here. Now, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to try to make this uh, computer as far as away as possible from the capital and areas around the capital. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 100, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, so, oh, whoops, forgot. And when you get in the Essentials uh, plugin, you have to put your name in where the other one it just already knew who you are. So, it looks like it's getting dark out, so let's do time set 1. And also, to show you guys what I have, I'm going to do plugins. Those are the plugins right there, even though there's more than just that. I realize that Citizens does not work, so I'm going to have to fix that. Um, but the Multi-World, World Edit, Auto Broadcaster, Core Protect, Bycraft, and Guilds are so far the, the plugins on there. To explain each one, world edit is very self-explanatory. You get to edit stuff in a high, really, really high degree. 
where you can use highly advanced brush tools and all sorts of stuff to replace stuff, to make stuff, to create stuff, to remove stuff, to fix stuff. Multi-world means that you could go into multiple dimensions. Sorry about like how the nether works and the end works, but you can have other different worlds. Auto broadcaster basically makes it so that it auto broadcasts stuff, even though I don't have that fully set up yet. Bycraft allows you to buy with real money through PayPal to get upgrades. Yes, it does give us money, but it also keeps the server running, and it also benefits you because you don't have to wait for people like us, the owners, to actually buy something. It's automatic. That's the cool thing. Core Protect is for anti-griefing. You can roll back griefing and know exactly who griefed it. So that's a really cool feature. And Guilds is what you may think of, just guilds. You get to have your own guilds. It's pretty fun stuff. So this is actually where I'm... Uh, what the heck, let's, let's bring this up one more. I know there's a lot of people probably yelling at me of graphics like I'm doing something wrong because I have a high-performance computer and somehow it doesn't uh, do full graphics on Minecraft, but whatever. So I am going to uh, destroy this tree. I was thinking about burning it, but then I'd burn my platform here, so... I'm going to use this for my computer. And this is so far out from the uh, original spot, it would take quite a while walking distance to actually get to this spot. And even if you could teleport, most likely you won't teleport here. And if you do teleport here or walk here or whatever, um, well, basically it's going to be protected. Yes, there is a pyramid over there, that's, that's a fun thing I did a while back. But, uh, this is sort of a bit like my playground area, way out here, basically, um, it's pretty fun. So, when I'm talking about a computer, like, I'm just kind of thinking about it literally just right now, I haven't really planned this out exactly, I was thinking of having a computer system where people can do stuff with a computer, or like, with buttons or something like that, where they can't destroy or hack it, but they can just press a button and they can tell us OPs, or, uh server owners to actually do something or something's not working right or somebody wants something basically it gives us a request i might make a third party application to sync with this but um for now basically we have uh the server here uh just my little area that i work with got a little piston house over there but um, I might actually work with some redstone too, like old-fashioned redstone, not like the ones in the uh, newer mods. Uh, just to uh, show you how to build certain things within the processor and stuff like that. It's really fun. I haven't really done it in a while, so I figured I'd try it out. But if all worse comes to worse, I'll just use the tech at mods. Even though on second thought, I actually might use some of the computers for the uh, calculations, basically. Just something fun I would do. It would basically just be the uh, computer stuff and addition of showing the server, which I just did. So, um, I guess I could actually use the turtles. Well, the thing is, though, um, for animation-wise, it has to stay very medieval. But for the actual public server, it can actually have some tech it stuff. It's no problem. It's just as long as you don't alter stuff within the capital and just outside the capital for a certain amount of distance. If you're as far away from the capital as I am, you can do whatever you want, really. As long as you have the resources and capabilities, of course. Okay, so I am placing down highly advanced computers, which I believe use gold to actually make because they have a special syntax system within the Lua coding. And I might actually program each computer to have a certain task for each turtle to do certain things. Now by doing this, you would have a rednet mod or a wireless rednet module on top of each computer. And for the sake of repetitiveness, I might put a, a for pro well, for reprogramming each computer, I might as well put a disk drive beside each computer so it would be easy to transfer a base code so I can just alter little things here and there. Um, 
so over here I will start off hope that I do not destroy the computer like I usually do sometimes um, what you would do is if you've seen my other uh, computer craft uh, tutorial videos which are my most popular videos on my channel uh, you can look at those if you don't understand what I'm doing I'm gonna go over some of the basics a little bit just a little bit refresher in a way but I'm gonna go pretty fast for this so I'm not gonna do too much detail per command but right now I'm just creating a file by doing the edit command like usual and this I might actually name as turtle one now I'm actually in the file turtle one I can edit stuff I could just do normal text files I could do notes or I can do Lua programming which is the main use I do for these I don't do any notes or anything like that could do comments within the Lua code but it kinda matters on what you want or don't want in a way but anyways let's do a uh, rednet that open and I believe I will be putting this on the top of the computer so when I type in top within the open dot or the rednet dot open it knows that there's a rednet module placed on top of the computer not on the right not on the left and it'll activate it so it knows it'll be connected to the wireless internet within minecraft so we do a uh, while true like I haven't been doing this for a very very long time so I might actually get some errors here and it makes even more of an excuse for you viewers to try and make fun of me in some ways but I haven't been doing Lua programming for months so I could do some errors if I do I know I will run into them and I'll fix them don't worry about it um, so I know they had to do the sleep command 0.1 um, as you can see, someone just popped in. That's the other owner of the server. Uh, his name is, uh, I don't know how to really say it. It's SKOKO789. Sokoko789, I believe his name is. He's the main person for the animations. Uh, he will be holding the server soon. I'm holding the server at the moment because I'm doing maintenance and trying to get NPCs and stuff like that into the game. But of course, I'm still working on it, so hopefully sooner or later I get that working. But anyways, back to the Lua tutorial. Um, oh, gosh dang it, music. I'll just turn down the volume. But uh, we got the Rednet opening, we got the loop that's infinite loop, but we're going to break out of it, or you can manually break out of it. Excuse me. Um, so the sleep command updates it and does a small delay so it doesn't go rampant through the loop. Infinite speed of loops, which it can't do. And uh, let me see here. What do we want our turtle to do? Um, maybe we just want a turtle that can be controlled by an individual. So in this case, we can... Uh, do um let me see here I believe it's ID and message equals um rednet that I can never spell receive right I can never spell receive right I should have looked that up I don't know if that's right or not I guess I will see yeah, it's, you're probably screaming at me that's wrong I know that it, let's just see if it's right or not if not I'll look it up Take me a few seconds. But anyways, for now, I believe it's ID and message. If not, I got it mixed up. But uh, we would do, I don't know if there's, yeah, whatever. Um, If message is equal, equal to forward, then turtle dot forward. I always want to put a semicolon, but I know this is not the right programming language for that. So we just keep on doing this for left. Uh, left, right, and also probably uh, up and down, stuff like that. So if message equals equals left, then turtle dot turn left I believe it is 
I don't know if that's a capital L or not, but again, I will always check. Turtle dot. No, oh, don't do any semicolons. Okay, so let's just keep it with this because I know some of the other stuff will take a little bit. So we're just going to work with this for now. I press control and you can do save, exit, and print. I can show you print in a second, but for now let's just save and then exit. And that is for the turtle program to actually work. So what we're going to do now is that we are going to um, create a system where you can actually probably buy certain currency through Minecraft and it could be a certain block or a certain item that can be used as decoration but is mainly used as a form of currency and through Bycraft we can probably sell that block to individuals and we can have it so that you place the block within um, a certain mechanism to get out a certain turtle or a certain item. Sort of like a vending machine. I know Tech It Light has its own vending machine, but it's just not really the same for uh, how... I don't know, just the way that I'm thinking of. I know you're probably scratching your head and saying, like, what the heck are you saying? But it's, it's sort of like a vending system. You'll see in a second how it works out. But what we're going to have here is uh, we have the uh, computer right here. The computer is holding the turtle code, and if you've been thinking what on earth is a turtle, is a natural animal. No, it isn't. It's actually a robot, but they call it a turtle. So what we have right here um, is we would have probably a. Uh, let me let me get some items here first. Uh, where's a certain cobblestone transport pipe? Is what we want. Okay, so we place the pipe right there, and we also have block. Uh, where where is the certain thing? Block. No, it won't be that. Oh well, I know where it is in here. Um, Industrial craft two, is it? Oh, actually, it might be the, uh, it might be this, which it is. We want deployer. Okay. Okay, so this deployer is going to make it so that it will deploy a turtle right there. And when the turtle is deployed, it will send a, red, a redstone current to the computer and automatically transport the program into the turtle when it gets deployed. By doing this, it will actually make it so that when the turtle is sent right here, it will have a automatic program to go up three spots into a teleporter, which will be teleported into, um, well, teleported to the vending machine and then moves out of the vending machine and there you can actually use it. Even though when I think about it, actually, if they break the turtle, then it loses the program, I believe, so... Maybe they should have a uh, floppy drive, or a floppy disk, I meant, that comes with it as a backup system for the code. Now, that would be kind of nifty. So, let's get a duplicator up and running. Um, I believe a duplicator is in the miscellaneous area this is a lot of force field stuff which is really cool too that's a liquid duplicator we want just a normal duplicator okay Oops. we got our duplicator right there we're gonna need some uh, wooden pipes but for now let's just look up the turtle Just an, let's do a, let's just do a wireless turtle. How about that? Probably be best. Whoops. Okay, so we get the wireless turtle right there. 
So it would be in there. So now we would have the wooden, the wooden pipe. The wooden pipe is used to grab out certain items from a duplicate or anything else that can hold items. And now we just need some blue tricity engine. Because blue the redstone engine now explodes, so now you would probably just use the blue tricity, which does not blow up over a certain amount of time. So I'm guessing only one of them would probably be needed. But let me see here. Uh, let me go and let me uh, get a solar panel up and running. Um, oops, passed it. Okay, so this is what we'd be needing: solar panel, and then we look at the cables. Cables we would use blue, blue alloy, which works with blue tricity. Put out some solar panels right here. If you're not familiar with Blutricity, it's a little different than the uh, Buildcraft and all that stuff. Because the power can transfer just from other items without using any wires, which is kind of cool. So, I'm going to use the wiring to go to the engine. And wires do go ver vertically, so that's a nice feature compared to traditional redstone that can only go flat. So that would be powering up, and you can see the that light right there light up when it's done, which it just did. So now if I put redstone to that, it will just continuously be pumping out um, these turtles into the deployer, and the, the, eh, the deployer needs redstone power to deploy a turtle right next to the computer. The computer will sense the turtle right next to it, so it would transfer files over to the turtle. But then again, there might be some issues or something like that where it needs a... Uh, actually, it might need a disk drive here, and then it can work with the disk drive. But you can use the disk drive to put um, floppy files into it. The computer puts the floppy file, or the uh, program, into the floppy file. Or <laughs> Let me restart here, because I know I just probably confuse people just by saying that on accident. Okay, so let's start from the beginning. This thing, a duplicator, creates multiple turtles. This engine gives power to grabbing out the turtles from the duplicator. Then the turtles move through this pipe to this deployer. The deployer is going to deploy a turtle into this area, which I should actually change because the thing I was saying a second ago actually kind of makes sense. So let me get a disk drive going here. Just a normal little disk drive right there. And now I'm going to alter. Oh, nope. Don't do it that way. I'm going to alter the piping a little bit. So now I need that deployer. Where's the deployer? Have the deployer right there. Um, what will happen is that there's a, probably going to be a, a pipe going under the disk drive right there to constantly feed it disk drives. Because the computer on the left, we're not going to care about the computer on the right over here, if I'm looking this way. Uh, the computer on the left has the code for the turtle that it needs to have in order to operate, right? So... When there's a signal probably coming from the front of the computer, a redstone signal coming in, and it's on, of course, it'll tell this computer to program the, or to copy the program over to the disk drive, which would be on the floppy disk. Now, the turtle will be right above the disk drive, and the turtle will also uh, be able to, I think the computer can probably program the, uh, turtle based on where it is above the disk drive. If I'm incorrect about that, I might alter this setup to make it so if I can see if I can do it where I can transport the file over to the turtle without using the disk drive. But I've heard that the disk drive usually works sometimes, but I could be wrong of course, so 
anyways, what I'm going to be doing after all this is all set up is that you will have a disk or a floppy disk and a turtle. The turtle has a program on there automatically, but most likely people are going to destroy the turtle. So they have the disk drive to reprogram the turtle if needed. Sort of bit like if you get Windows in real life, you have a backup drive with your computer. So if you decide to wipe out your computer for some reason, you always have the programs you could put back onto it. And you can probably do this all through buying certain things through Bycraft, which is again through PayPal. And then you can use the certain currency or certain block or so something where it's not like a huge functionality, it's more of a decoration. You can decorate your stuff, but of course people might grief it, even though if you if you buy certain lots through money or something like that, you can actually have a protected area. But um right now this is a really cool idea because you can buy your own turtles, you can buy your own stuff, certain items using probably a currency like it'll probably be something like a uh, it's not going to be stone bricks but it could be like something like that's the best way to represent it. it could be like an object like that but probably through the tech it probably something like marble or something but again I just kind of thought that all up during the video so I'd have to talk it over with my friends that own the server but uh, it's actually a cool idea I'm going to uh, I'm, I'm going to continue on with this idea, but for now, I'm just going to end the video for here. I thank all of you for viewing. Um, happy 4th of July and stuff like that. I hope you have really good fireworks and all that. Um, make sure to like the video so others can see. Anyone else that's really interested as a builder, make sure you actually send me a comment through YouTube. Or just, like, you can pers you can personal message me through YouTube or you can send, just have a comment on YouTube. You can go on to Facebook and try to find me as Sovar Sov and say something to me. But for now, we're just looking for minor builders. Not too many, just a little bit. Just to help with medieval building at the moment. we already got a couple builders working on stuff, but if you're interested, definitely tell us. It's going to be in an animation and a public server, so that's a really cool thing too. Um, thank you for watching. Uh, make sure to comment, share the video on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, and also please subscribe to my channel. Again, 103 subscribers is awesome. I really appreciate it. Let's see how much we can do more now. So, uh, thank you for watching, everyone. Uh, this is Mr. Sovar, and see you later.